Good day, fish tankers. We are here at the Aquarium Center in Kenilworth in the south of Johannesburg, not Kenilworth in Cape Town. It's massive. Let's see what they have. Well, as we look at these nice silver dollars, thank you, Geisbert Wogendoren, for the great footage. There we see a different silver dollar with a stripe, and this is a arowana you don't see any day. I think it is the Asian arowana, but that's the one you see less of the time. And some nice sized clown loaches here as well. They like being in a group, they need a big tank, as we all know. And there's a big plecostomus on top of a driftwood. They like driftwood in their tanks. You can see the size that they do get to. But he's happy in this tank. And there's a sea fruit tank. You can see the rainbow fish. And it's a nice challenge to aquascape a tank that is sort of a room divider that you can see through. And there's a massive rainbow fish there. I'm not sure what the species is. But there are the busmanis as well, as well as the red rainbows that we all know. And here are the diamond tetras. We've all kept them before, or at least I have. It's some of my favorite fish. I've got a small breeding colony going. And we've got some gold color variation of a free spot garami. One of the bigger garamis. They can get a little bit semi aggressive. And here we have some juvenile cichlids. That's a small golden deacon, and that looks like an albino version of a polypterus. They also grow quite big. These are juveniles. I think they could be geophagus. I'm not quite sure. Always feel free to correct me in the comment section if you want to. Gold color of uh, the, the tin foil bob as well as a nice albino Oscar here. Of course, you know if it's a true albino by looking at the pupils of the eyes. They're red. Like this one over here. If it's black, then you know it's just sort of a, a white version or a golden version. I like the discus like these because I like that little squiggly lines of the one in front. I, I like those patterns. Red tiger Oscars for albino and the black version along with severums or deacons as we call them here in South Africa. Guys please remember to punch that like button. I will greatly appreciate that. And here we go with some more juvenile cichlids. And there we've got all the different colors of mollies. I tend to prefer the jet black version of a molly. And the main thing to remember with them is most live bearers you need hard alkaline water. So if you've got soft water like mine, put some crushed coral on the substrate. There were some arandas very quickly and this looks like a Texas cichlid to me. Nice big bruiser. And some more free spot garamis. There's a Cosby version, that mottled one marble angel fish and over here that one that's sort of shiny like that with one color is a moonlight karami i do like moonlight karamis i've kept them before they're quite peaceful like they sort of have the same temperament as a pole garami and here we see some small silver dollars you can tell they're skittish so with silver dollars not sharp decorations but some hiding space in the form of driftwood maybe i can't say plants because they'll use them like a lawnmower uses grass some nice jet black mollies as well and some Buenos Aires tetras. It's a more robust tetra, it can handle a bit of cooler water, will eat a bit of plants but they can hold their own with uh, bigger fish that can be semi-aggressive. Semi Here's how you tell a male angel fish. This is a male angel fish. Look at the new call hump on the forehead, that humped forehead. That tells you that it's male. Just like other cichlids, but they need to be they need to be older for you to see that. Nah, glow, glow fish. If it's your thing, then go ahead. But there's a Busmani rainbow in there as well, that will be down to something. There's a Cribensis. Now we know the Cribensis. They cut up very nicely. And an understated shoaling fish of black neon tetra is great when you have an aquascape and it is all going to be about the scape. 
then you want these fish in your aquarium. Some red eye tetras, some prestellas. and some white tip tetras. They can be fin nippy but they tight shoulders, they can be, they do well with other fish that can all be owned like bulbs for instance, I've seen them kept together and a very nice white betta. I had to pick a song with this one and the short it would be nights in white satin and then she's got those dumbo pectoral fins. Nice looking fish and some neon tetras. Good old Neon Tetra. And some penguins or hockey sticks. Those that swim with an upright motion with a black line down to the bottom lobe of the tail fin. Some red tailed sharks, Labio bicolor. I do like them, they're very striking fish, they grow large, but if you just keep a single one with fish that don't resemble it, they do well. Don't put them in with a Siamese algae eater, for instance, that's got the same shape. Guys, please remember to share the content among your fish keeping friends. It will help to get it out there. But as I was saying, here we see some rainbow sharks, same temperament as a bicolor shark. Just keep one and keep them away from fish that look similar. So don't put a rainbow shark with a bicolor or red tail shark or with a Siamese algae eater that's got the same shape. They will squabble. Very nice looking betta. In my days we only had these veil tail type bettas and you had red or blue. And the very underrated Colombian red fin tetra. I still got two very old ones left in my tank. I'm in two minds whether I should replenish them or get something else when they pass onto a big tank in the sky. And here we see black skirt tetras and white skirt tetras, different colors of the same species. And there's some albino rainbow sharks. And some danios and other small fish. I can't always make it out when they swim so fast. But those are danios that you see there. And here some kerry blue tetras as well as some, some black emperor tetras. A black emperor tetra popped up in one of my tanks, they sort of colony breed in there. And very nice platies here, we see the tuxedos, we see the Mickey Mouse platies, the sunset platies. Those look like a version of a wagtail platy, the fins are quite that black lemon tetras and rosy bobs. I do like the lemon tetras, I think they are quite underrated actually. And the beta sorority. Tell me in the comment section if you've kept the beta sorority a tank of just better females successfully or not. I think it's sort of a hit and miss. And here we've got some guppies, you can see all the babies. There's some endless guppies there. Just put them in a well planted tank and you'll have an endless supply of fish. You'll never have to buy fish again. In fact, you'll give some to the pet shop for food. Some zebra danios. And here we have some black phantom tetras as well. And these are koi sawtails or kohaku sawtails and a very nice red betta. And some tiger bobs. I do like tiger bobs. A big group of them with some other bobs in a tank of their own. Can look very nice. There's some hill stream loaches there in the back like little stingrays and everybody's favorite hybrid love them or hate them the red parrot I had one it made a very nice wet pet and there's a black shark there in the back you just quickly saw him now these can grow very big much bigger than your red tail shark or your rainbow shark so you need a big tank for them and some rose line sharks or red torpedo bobs or denizen bobs whatever you want to call them
and some rainbow fishes, melanotania, something or other. I can't remember the common name, but I used to keep them, and there's a very nice synodontus. And there's some geophagus in the back here, quite nice looking. I like geophagus, they grow out to a sizable fish with those, those extended um, fin, trailing fins, and they're not very overly aggressive. But these guys can be bolshy, these are convict cichlids, I see both in the normal colour and the, the gold colour or the white colour. And here we've got some discus. Remember when you get discus the size of juveniles, you've got to feed them a lot to make them meet their potential as adults. At least three times a day, four times is better. Get an automatic feeder and high temperatures. And here's a pike cichlid, definitely a predator. Don't put them in your tank of guppies. You'll have one big pike cichlid and no guppies. My very nice red copper, Oscar, some more red parrots. And that looks like an African jewel cichlid to me. West African cichlids, not the East African lake cichlids. But also as, my, as almost all cichlids, they can be aggressive. And there you see there's some ideals and side breaks. There's some albino tiger bulbs with the normal colored ones. You also get the green tiger bulbs, those blackish ones there at the back. And some dwarf garamis. Different color versions of them. Nice centerpiece fish for a smaller aquarium. And some golden German rams and guys help me out in the comment section and ID this puffer for me because it looks like an avocado puffer to me but I'm not sure the color doesn't seem quite right but you see they're not flat they sort of laterally compressed this is a bucket load fish or a bucket list fish sorry fish I would like to have someday very unique looking puffer and here we're back to the German rams not because they come from Germany, but the Germans brought them into the hobby. They like high temperatures. You've got to get good stock. Now, these are Bolivian rams. They, they don't need that high of a temperature. They can be fine in 22, 23 degrees Celsius. They're a bit tougher and uh, not quite as colorful, but a very nice alternative to the German rams. And this guy is a uh, Neolamprologus lelupai, if I get it right. Lemon cichlid is a Tanganyikan cichlid. And that's definitely something I would keep if I had a Tanganyikan tank. Tell me in the comment section who has kept the Tanganyikan cichlid tank. And are they less aggressive than the, than, than the Lake Malawi, Mbuna and Peacock cichlids? I would like to know. I think they might be. Here's more Tanganyikan. So here's a, a baby. Now the name drops out of my head. We all know there's a Julie the Chromis there. I don't know what the blackfish is. And, uh, and here's a green terror getting ready to terrorize. A baby frontosa that was. Now the name is back in my head. I'm also getting older. Here's some Mbuna rock dwellers. You can see from the elongated shapes. Lots of different colors, and you have to crowd them and, and, and have lots of hiding spaces. And another thing about the Mbuna that I do know, I'm not the African cichlid expert at all, but from my days of running a shop, these Mbuna cichlids are vegetable eaters. They feed off algae mostly, and some crustaceans in the algae, but you've got to feed them a vegetable-based diet. So spirulina flakes, vegetable pellets. If you feed them a high-protein diet, like you would feed for growing discus, then eventually they're going to get an infection of the gut and develop a disease called Malawi bloat, which basically makes them bloat, as the name says. They basically get dropsy from a gut infection from getting fed the wrong food. So you have to feed them differently, for instance, when you would feed peacock cichlids, that's also a kind of Malawian cichlid. There's so, um, ice blue albinos, hundreds of juveniles. Difficult to ID these fish sometimes because as juveniles they look vastly different as they grow 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 older they get colour and some of the females just stay sort of nondescript like that. So it's very hard to uh, to get the difference between the dip, to ID the different kinds of females. Bunches and bunches of the Malawi cichlids.
There's some baby frontosa again in between them. And those are of course Plastis planticus, artificial plants of these Malawi cichlids, because plants don't last. I've seen them kept with Anubias in the rock work. I've seen that work. Have you kept a successful planted Malawi tank? Then let us know how you did it. Lots and lots of cichlids. Is the water there in Joburg hard and alkaline? I suppose it would be, as opposed to the soft acidic okay, water good. we get here in the Alderberg Stellenbosch area. So that would explain the popularity because they fit your water. If a fish matches your water coming out of a tap, it makes things so much easier for you. I'd also be interested to know how many fish, how many fish keepers keep Malawian cichlids and 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 that sort of fish. It's more fish orientated as opposed to the people like me who have more planted tanks. I would like to know what the demographics in the lobby are at the moment. I tend to think it, it trends more towards planted tanks and nano planted tanks with these shrimps that have become so popular, but I could be wrong. There's something to be said about the tank that is more fish orientated as well. Here we've got Melanochromus auratus, you can see they rough little fish. If I had to do a Malawian tank, I would like to do it the way George Farmer has done it in that tank in his living room with uh, rock work and the Anubias and only one species in it, the Chindonga Silosai, because the males are dark blue and the females are bright yellow, so it looks like two species, but it's only one. I'd like a tank like that because they don't grow too big and they tend to Oh, according to George, not be as aggressive. So that's something I would still like to try. That's on the bucket list there with the avocado puffer, if indeed it was an avocado puffer. Some more cichlids under the blue light. Could of course also be the camera. Now there's some, there's an OB peacock orange blue peacock you see that sort of skittles coloration that it's got i do find that color morph interesting to the eye at least and here's a melanotania praecox a dwarf neon rainbow needs to be in the shoal needs a few buddies you can see it's skittish it's a nice rainbow it's not as small as a smithsirum eagle but it's not as big as a Busmani, so you can keep it sort of in a average size, three foot or two foot tank, and it'll be fine. You look at that cichlid making himself a little depression underneath the driftwood that's breeding behavior. And yet more of them. Cichlid, cichlids as far as what I can see. But they are interesting nonetheless. And I also like if I'm doing some fish tubing to watch channels of people who keep fish that I don't necessarily keep. So I do, do enjoy the cichlid uh, channels like Cichlid Bros is a channel you can check out. They've got a, a, a predator half tank for one brother and they've got a Malawian tank and they've got, they've got all sorts of cichlids. They also have a South Americans. Ben Ochoat is another channel. He also has some impressive African cichlids along with many other fish. Sometimes you want a caveman aquatics is the number one that does the, the, the cichlid thing. And uh, sometimes you just also want to see what other guys are doing in the hobby because it's nice to see the, the diversity within the hobby. You know, sometimes I want to watch a tank that's not like the tanks that I've, that I've kept. More and more cichlids. You're not going to have a trouble there finding them if that's your thing. Lots and lots of them in Joburg. 
These are also nice with those colourful fins. Get more of them. Let me know in the comment section. We've been quite heavy on the store tours now because I've got Geisbert helping me out as we see something that's more that's more my kind of thing, a planted aquarium with crypts and valleys near here. Do you enjoy the store tours or do you prefer the videos that are more educationally orientated, uh, problem solving things, hack things or a combination of everything? I try to also sort of vary things up, not always have it educational. So sometimes we have these store tours, very grateful that I've got somebody helping me out with the footage. And sometimes I see a problem and then I try and solve it if it's within my field of knowledge. So let me know what you would like to see on the channel and we'll see what we can do. Nice koi on the outside as well. I like these koi. You can see from the top they're in good condition with backs on pinched. I've got good luster going on there. Some nice looking fish. Do you keep freshwater tropicals? Do you keep koi? Do you keep seawater fish? Who keeps all of them? Who's got a seawater tank and a freshwater tank? and a koi pond outside and they're still happily married. I'd like to know, let me know. <laughs> and there's a lot of little tetras here and some harlequin rasboras as well. And here you see the plants in the pots. Remember guys, take the plants out of the pots, throw away the rock wool and then plant it in the substrate that's got some nutrients in aquaswell or root tabs or dirted substrate, don't push the pots into the substrate. The plant will grow through the pots and all that, but eventually that rock will disintegrate and causes a mess. Here's a nice looking display, there's some dwarf cichlid going there. Look how nice the albino quarries look on the dark sandy substrate. And I like the piece of wood. I'm not the expert aquascaper, but height adds interest, that I've learned. So guard against putting all your hardscape like your wood and your rocks just flat on the ground. Try and build it up somewhat. Beautiful beta, look at that two tone colors. And remember with betas, especially the long fin ones, they don't like a lot of water flow. So a sponge water like one bubbling away there is absolutely ideal. If you have a small hang on back or a little internal filter, then turn down the flow. And outside you can see plenty of hardscape. Look at all the rocks. That's the thing about fish keepers, eh? We, 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 we take our money and we give it to somebody and we come home with lots of pieces of dried wood and rocks. Very hard for a non-fish keeping person to understand. To explain how much money you've spent on rocks. There we see plenty here to select from. Guys, please remember to subscribe. Thank you to everybody who did. And this is going to be it from me. I'm going to play out here after you look, uh, with you looking at all the dry goods. And until I see you again, remember to take good care of those domestic denizens of the deep.